option for Mofix just for your baby. Mofix pants with anatomic fit technology. New Mofix pants, an invention from babies for babies. You should also try Mofix. For the women who deserve more, Moped is now in Kenya and more than 40 countries with its nylon free surface. New Moped has unique softness and up to 100% protection. Your skin will love it. Yutuzo Yogurt Cup Size Yako Bay Yako Royal Mabati offers cost effective weather resistant quality sheets. Get gauge 28 at 670 Kenya shillings, gauge 30 at 370, gauge 30 med at 530, royal alusink at 280 Kenya shillings. Buy today and lipa pole pole with a guaranteed delivery countrywide, located along Mombasa Road, Mlolongo, and at different branches in different towns. Call us today on 0722-638383, Royal Mabati Factory. Factory Limited. We are the best. This is NTV. Just a couple of minutes to 9 o'clock. Thanks very much for joining us on NTV tonight. Among the top stories... Tonight. <laughs> chaos. <laughs> Anything but order. The BBI fight at the Baringo County Assembly ended with the BBI bill being knocked down. Then, more chaos. And I've not seen... The, the BBI bill, except to today. How about the ordinary monarchy? Jubilee MCAs who don't toe the line will face the wrath of the party. We are very, very confident that you'll be able to carry out the referendum by June. And from the famed Kamata Kamata Fridays to many dramatic arrests perceived to be politically motivated. Is the DCI the gun fired by one divide of the executive? For anybody really to allege that the oh, whole we are being used for this on that is being in just a mitigation. We also know, isn't it? Iko muise na ibanga rafu anasema mini riba. Also tonight, in just one month, COVID-19 has taken away many, many more lives across the continent. Deaths from COVID-19 have increased by 40% in the last 28 days. Kenya insists on vaccine rollout despite concerns of efficacy. And when the curtains draw on your life and you are confined to a cold room drawer, her hands draw dignity to your remains. There's a lot of stigmatization around death and uh, around the people that work in the mortuary. She has given her life to handle the dead, the mortician of Nyahururu. NTV Tonight with Smriti Vidyarthi. 
Great to have you with us. Plenty to look forward to tonight. And Flora Atieno is our sign language interpreter. Now, the Baringo County Assembly becomes the first to oppose the BBI Constitutional Amendment Bill 2020 in a chaotic county assembly session. Bridget Ngana reports that the debate, deemed as a supremacy battle between Deputy President William Ruto and Baringo Senator Gideon Moy, ended in what some believe was a win for Ruto. Bridget will bring us that story shortly in this broadcast. Elsewhere, the Directorate of Criminal Investigations has been criticized a number of times for acting with a lot of pomp and color in the fight against corruption and crime, but only at the whim of the executive. DCI Director George Kinotti has refuted claims that he and his office are being used to further a political agenda. Anita Nkonge with this report. Head of the Directorate of Criminal Investigations, George Kinotti, has dismissed claims that he's being used as a political puppet to further political aspirations. This is after claims were made that the DCI boss has been working under the executive's command to harass politicians who have not been supportive of President Uhuru Kenyatta's political direction. Let's be honest, isn't it? Let's say somebody commits a crime and the only mitigation is to say the government is being used against this and this that person. Then when we arrest and take to court, let's be honest, when do we to court these people to court? Remember when we arrest somebody and we make up a case after investigation, so we take that person to court. Remember when we take that because we are the one to raise the Ori book or the Ori Quran to swear that what we are going to say in that court is nothing but the truth before God. Speaking during the official opening of the newly constructed DCI offices in Juja Kiambu County, Kinoti said that his working relationship with the Director of Public Prosecutions, Nuruddin Haji, could not be better. My working relationship with the Director of Public Prosecution is one of the best. You know, we are similar. There is one thing I can for sure tell you. The investigation is 50%, prosecution is 50%, then it's arbitrated by the court. In the criminal justice system, we have three pillars, investigations, prosecution, and the court. So when some few challenges do occur here and there, which is very ordinary, it is translated like we have absolutely no war, no problem, we are doing very well. Very soon we are going to see even some of the cases which are still under, under prosecution. I mean, uh, we are going to see the fruit of our work, both between our investigators and prosecution. Kinoti and Haji have for the past few years been working together to tackle corruption cases. Anita Nkonge, NTV. And Jubilee County Assemblies that will not pass the BBI Constitutional Amendment Bill 2020 risk disciplinary action. This is according to a letter written to majority leaders of county assemblies, the party has said. In the letter, the party notes it is inexplicable for any reasonable MCA to find fault in the document, yet there are benefits contained therein. NTV senior political affairs reporter Kennedy Moredi has more. County assemblies in regions the Jubilee Party has a say in will now have to pass the BBI Constitutional Amendment Bill 2020 or face their consequences. A letter addressed to all MCAs through the majority leaders of those assemblies notes that it is the party position that the bill is supported without fail. In calling for total support, the letter signed by Secretary General Rafael Tuju says the party would invoke Articles 13.3 Parts F and G of the party constitution should the MCAs fail to adhere to the requirement. Article 13.3 says disciplinary action shall be instituted against a member in cases of F. Acting or advancing positions contrary to the party position and G. Failure, refusal or neglect to carry out directives or instructions of the party. According to the letter, there are sweeteners such as an increase in allocations to counties from 15 to 35 percent and the introduction of a ward fund, which will be enough incentives for the passage of the bill. In making justification for the passage of the bill, the letter dated 8th February further notes, it is inexplicable that any reasonable MCA will find fault with these new advantages that will result from the passage of the BBI. This letter comes at a time when three county assemblies from Nyanza, where ODM leader Raila Odinga comes from, have approved the bill. 
These include Kisumu, Siaya and Homa Bay, which is the latest. This document is encouraging all women of this country to walk out and fight for their space. Baringo County has rejected the bill this evening. And since a majority are Jubilee MCAs, they just may be the first to face the disciplinary action. But even as the hiccup from the Baringo County Assembly manifests, the BBI Secretariat says it is on course to have the bill passed in at least 35 counties by the end of this month. Co-Chair Dennis Waweru says the Secretariat is confident timelines will be met. We are on course, as you have seen. If we will be able to have done the, the 35 counties by the end of the month, so we are on schedule, we are on course, and we are very, very confident that we will be able to carry out the referendum by June this year. Wawero says the Secretariat is also confident of achieving the desired outcome despite the court cases that are yet to be adjudicated. With a new edict from the Jubilee Party, it is clear where the BBI Secretariat gets its confidence from Kennedy Muredi and TV. All right, to our top story now, and BBI blows boxing and insults. The embodiment of the situation when the constitutional amendment Bill 2020 was tabled in the Baringo County Assembly. Now, Baringo MCA has become the first to shoot down the BBI bill in a chaotic county session. Bridget Sangana reports that the debate, deemed as a supremacy battle between Deputy President William Ruto and Baringo Senator Gideon Moy, ended in what some believe was a win for Ruto. The Constitution of Kenya Amendment Bill 2020. And this bill, Mr. Speaker, is not our own. At first, things were calm in the Baringo County Assembly as members convened to debate, approve, or dismiss the Constitutional Amendment Bill 2020 also known as the BBI bill. But it didn't take long for things to fall apart. Mogotio MCA Charles Koske instigating a fist fight with the first recipient being Cabernet MCA Ernest Kibet. <laughs> Some members of the county assembly were accusing the speaker David Kiplagat of bias in handling the debate. And others accused House officials of intentionally denying them a copy of the BBI bill before the debate. Imagine I am an elected member of County Assembly of Baringo from Tura Maya Ward and I have not seen the, the BBI bill except to today. How about the ordinary monarchy? Police on standby had to intervene as things got out of hand. The Lord have mercy. In the chaos and tear gas, a vote was somehow held with 30 MCAs voting against and 10 voting for. County Assembly Speaker David Kiplagat then declared the BBI bill defeated before making a hasty retreat through the next available window. <laughs> Why was that brought? Why, why was the Tigas brought in? No, it is just because they know we, they have been defeated. Uh -huh. Tigas now, in my opinion, we had a very peaceful election and we've just finished. Now they are bringing Tigas. And that is Wafula. We know. They wanted to cause chaos in this election. But thank God because we finished. So what is and it was thing? announced. So everything is finished. Mm -hmm. So far, only Siaya, Kisumu, and Homa Bay County assemblies have passed the BBI bill. Bridget, Ghana, NTV. Yes, yes. And those are our leaders, clearly not leading by example. All right, let's shift focus to other issues of national concern and we get a check of the COVID cases now. Today, 132 more people have tested positive for the virus out of a sample size of 4,220 tested in the last 24 hours. The national caseload rises to 102,353. Out of the new infections, 111 are Kenyans and 21 are foreigners. 
Three more people have succumbed to the virus and that raises the death toll to 1,794. Meanwhile, 62 patients have recovered and the total recovery stands at 84,790. In the counties, Nairobi has recorded 96 more infections, Kiambu 8, Taita Taveta 6, uh, Kisumu and Nakuru 4, while uh, Meru has 3. Now, the Ministry of Health has said that it will still continue with the rollout of the AstraZeneca Oxford COVID-19 vaccine amid concerns over its efficacy following the discovery of new variants. Due to South Africa's new variant, B1351, the country has opted to pull out of the rollout of the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine, saying it is not effective enough to combat the virus. Variant B1351, first detected in South Africa, has now been found in eight other countries, while variant B117 from the UK has been detected in six countries. This week, South Africa announced initially that they would pause the rollout of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine because a study indicating that the vaccine is less effective in preventing mild and moderate infection with the new variant that is dominant in the country. B1351, the South African variant, is said to spread rapidly. Kenya has so far detected two cases of the variant with the Ministry of Health saying it has managed to contain it. The ministry further says it will continue with the planned rollout of the AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine in the country. WHO says frontline workers across the region continue to be stretched, particularly healthcare workers. Vaccines from the first phase of the rollout in Kenya are set to arrive in March, targeting 1.2 million people. Meanwhile, in Batuk, the military base in Nanyuki is under lockdown after some British soldiers tested positive for the UK strain. There have been concerns in Kenya about the country's preparedness to combat the new strains if they become widespread. But the Ministry of Health maintains that there is no cause for alarm. All right, elsewhere now, and it is likely to take a few months before the country has a new chief justice. And this is due to the statutory timelines that guide the process to get a new CJ into office. So let's now have a look at where we are. Applications for the top job have been submitted, and now the Judicial Service Commission is set to constitute a selection panel, as, requested, um, as required rather by law. That panel will then shortlist those for nominations by the Commission. All right, the JSC will then publish the names of the applicants um, and the shortlisted candidates in the local dailies. The process requires public participation as well, so the Commission will then invite members of the public to avail in writing any information of interest to the Commission in relation to any of the applicants. Now, to verify any given information, the Commission is expected to conduct reference checks on the candidate. The JSC panel will then interview the shortlisted um, candidates and the name of the successful candidate is then sent to the Justice and Legal Affairs Committee of Parliament, that's JLAC, for uh, vetting. And uh, the name is then sent to the President for appointment into office as Chief Justice. And once the President appoints the Chief Justice, that applicant or the new CJ appointee is then sworn into office at State House. And as I said, that entire process may take a few months. So we'll be waiting and watching. You're watching NTV tonight. We take a quick breather now, but more when we return. Stay with us. The day the world stopped was the day we found where to go. From now on, we are not going to leave anything on our plates. 
because we've learned to savor the moments that were always there and they never tasted this good. For a better tomorrow, don't forget to do the one, two, three with Colgate every night. At the first sign of pain, you need a solution that you can trust to provide effective relief and is gentle on the stomach. Try Panadol Advance for relief from headaches, body aches, and fever. With Panadol's Optizorb formula, the tablet gently breaks down in the stomach, quickly absorbs, and starts providing pain relief in 15 minutes. For fast and effective pain relief that you can trust, try Panadol Advance. This has been Medifax for Panadol. Tuzo yogurt cup. Size yako, bay yako. Sasa, mimi ni Zuri from Safaricom na niko hapa kukuchanua. Jichanue na data statement kujua vile kila MB ya bundle yako imetumika. Dial star 544 hash and select 8 for bundle management. The first time you access your data statement, una get 200 MBs completely free. New Tuzo Yogurt Cup Size Yako Bay Yako This week on the trend. Oh, you got me in love, love, baby. Na you walk on a thing, you wear a semi. Sina sifa zaki haya. Nini chojari wa mahaba. All this and many more only on the trend. I'm in a happy mama, you won't fire. Gift your loved one a plot of value-added land at the Garden of Joy and get an instant 14K cash voucher for a 500K plus deposit. Call us today on 0790-300-300. Karibu ni sana Lotto. This is the money hour. Gina Lango ni Beverly Nita. Kumbuka, unachezea jackpot ya 25 million Kenya shillings. Gina Lango ni Mike Makori. Hapa kukukubusha. 25 million Kenya shillings could be yours if you match your six lucky numbers to enter the mega jackpot draw. All you have to do is play any amount from 50 shillings to 1,000 Kenya shillings known as a jishindia yani ile juu jackpot ya 25 million Kenya shillings. Kumbuka pia thousands of other cash prizes are up for grabs in the second chance lucky draw. 
Kucheza ni raisi. All you have to do is weke between 50 bob to 1,000 Kenya shillings. Pay bill number 777-000. Alafu, tunakuambia kila laheri. Thanks for staying with us. February 14th is not just Valentine's Day. It also marks a year since the first COVID-19 infection was reported in Africa. A year on, the death rates are a concern to the World Health Organization in light of the overwhelmed healthcare systems and workers. In just the past four weeks, the number of COVID-related deaths has risen by 40%. Yunus Omolo reports on the WHO's assessment of the situation so far. On February 14, 2020, Egypt became the first country in Africa to report a COVID-19 positive individual. Since then, the continent has recorded more than 3.7 million infections and the death toll is presenting a tall order. In the coming week, the continent is projected to pass a devastating marker of 100,000 lives sadly lost to this virus. The World Health Organization's data shows that Africa accounts for 3.5% of global infections and 4% of global deaths, which have increased in the past few weeks. The second wave, which appears to have peaked in January, has been far more lethal than the first. Deaths from COVID-19 have increased by 40% in the last 28 days compared to the previous 28 days. This morbid situation is marked by many letting their guards down amid a concerning reality of the systems. The increasing deaths from COVID-19 are a tragic warning that health workers and health systems in many countries are dangerously overstretched. Most African nations were swift in putting measures to control the spread, despite being injurious to most economies, and the injuries have indeed been experienced. In sub-Saharan Africa last year, the GDP fell by 2.6%, and the IMF predicts that Africa will be the slowest growing large region in 2021. So the socioeconomic impacts of this pandemic will have ongoing repercussions for several years in African countries. The one-year mark of COVID-19 in Africa comes as the continent has begun recording new strains of COVID-19 alongside the efforts to roll out vaccines. Eunice Omolo, NTV, Nairobi. Earlier this year, the country was gripped with horror after a 22-year-old Lawrence Warunge was alleged to have killed his mother, father, brother, cousin and family worker in cold blood. He gave a chilling account in, to investigators how he carried out the heinous act. On January 26th, after examination, Lawrence was found unfit to stand trial. Many asked why. What does it take to be declared fit or unfit to face trial for the murder of another person? Malayla well, Mohammed sat down with experts and tried to make sense of it all. Despite the length of time it will take for a murder trial to be heard and fully determined, the journey to an acquittal or a conviction begins with a mental assessment, which will determine if one is mentally stable to stand trial for that offence. The recent announcement at a Kiambu court Declaring key suspect Lawrence Warunge in the murder of a family brutally taken from their kin in a night of terror, unfit to take plea, caught many off guard. Chief Magistrate Patricia Gishohi allowed that the suspect be held in custody for 30 days, after which he will undergo another examination. When somebody walks in for the mental state examination, uh, even the way they walk, their gait, um, the way, whether they are camped or not, uh, whether they have mannerisms, because some people with hallucinations and uh, delusions will even be talking to themselves or talking to people you can't see. So you observe them as they come in. The decision, though shocking to many, isn't a shocker to the medical experts who undertake that important test that determines the fate of one accused of taking the life of another. Because not everybody who comes for examination there is found not fit. Some are fit to continue with that trial. So 
the ones who are able to explain, then they'll explain you, yes, I'm to you that I'm here because uh, I'm associated with a certain murder. The understanding of a murder suspect on the implications of their actions and what the near future entails is a matter that criminal lawyers say is key in the criminal justice system to protect the rights of even the accused. What can find out from the experts what has between the, uh, the, the intervening period between the date that person was being brought to court and where the court uh, made the decision that is unfit because the purpose of men, uh, being mentally fit is for the person, uh, for the this person is not yet even an accused because he has not taken plea. But this person has been brought to court to be able to understand what is happening. Doctors who determine the fate of men who have committed the ultimate crime concur. By the time we diagnose even depression or even psychosis or even bipolar, we have to do tests. In the legal corridors, once the mental state of a man accused of such an offence becomes of concern and might make them unable to take plea, the court can make a pronouncement to determine the future of that individual. Upon reviewing the facts, when the court interrogates the facts and it, it comes to a conclusion that uh, there's a high likelihood that this person is the one who committed the crime, so what will happen is the court can give directions, give, uh, do a decision which will direct the cabinet secretary in charge to, to ensure this person is placed in a mental institution. Now that one will be for a particular time frame. And in case one is taken into a psychiatric facility and serves out a set time due to the order of the court, can they still stand trial? No. No. That would be double jeopardy because they've already been, it has already been determined by the court. Uh, this is, uh, these are the circumstances. This person is culpable. However, uh, at, the at the time they were standing trial, they were not fit, they were not well. But this, and for people under this kind of category, this is the kind of punishment that can be meted to them. So the court cannot punish someone twice. That's essentially the thing. Yeah. Doctors say that in their sessions with suspects, they are able to pick out signs of those trying to evade the justice system by lying about their mental state. To remand, they mix with so many people and they come there mute, pretending that they cannot speak. Uh, let me not use. So when you examine them, then you can tell that this person either can speak or even, you know, our in uh, observation, we will even ask the prison warder when this person was coming with you or the police officer, was he talking? How has he been? So you'll also get that information and uh, for those who we cannot determine, we are also free to write to the court and say, I would want this person to be admitted for close observation for us to be able to give a final opinion. So as a psychiatrist, you are not under pressure that you must give a report the first day. Kiambuma, the suspect Lawrence Warunge, will undergo another evaluation in two weeks to certify if he is unfit to stand trial before the mention of his case on March 1st. Experts say that before one undertakes what is in his mind and heart, some speak out their desires and give signs that those closer to them need to be keen on and get help before all hell breaks loose. Leila Mohammed, NTV. Wow, what an eye-opener. Certainly a story that we will be keeping tabs on. All right, now for years, some jobs have been considered to be fit for men and akin to taboo for women to engage in. But times and tide have turned, and many women are ably taking on jobs that were previously the preserve of men. But then add the gender divide to a misunderstood and stigma-laden career. That is the reality for Anne Wanjiku, who is a mortician in Nyahururu in the county of Laikipia. She narrated to NTV's Philomen Kimayo what her journey has been like, her inspiration, her battle with stigma, and her points of fear. Okay, I'm flattered. <laughs> You are told as a child, there's a person called a mortician. I think the opportunities that are represented to you when you're growing up at the, the big names, uh, the doctor, engineers, the lawyers and stuff. Uh. So growing up, you don't have really much to choose from. My family has been very supportive, but um, 
just growing up just like any other child i think uh, your parents want you to or your guardians want you to become this big uh, big careers eh? they want you to become a doctor they want you to do these big things eh? so uh, when i told them i remember I went to my uncle and told i want to do mortuary science or i want to become a mortician he was shocked at first and he was very hesitant he didn't know how to respond then because uh, given the image that has been painted uh, about um, the image that has been painted about of those who work in this industry is not that good of a picture so they thought probably i'd be oriented in the same uh, when you the body is off the fridge i think uh, it's either for the preparation of viewing or the body is supposed to be prepared for dispatch so once the body is enlarged the first thing you want to do is to set the temperature so it is automated yeah the sensors can tell the amount of uh, temperature to go down or up depending on your body fat because the essence of uh, the refrigerator is for uh, preserving the skin and fat yeah so if you're small it goes up if you're big or your body fat is uh, a lot it goes up so these are post-mortem table uh, mostly it's used for post-mortems at the same time it is used for cleaning of bodies so immediately a body arrives you from the clean you put it here so then you undress the body from there after undressing you wash the body so we have these pillows that are used during the time of viewing the act as a headrest so that at least uh, you can create a assumption of a resting person uh, that way it helps a lot to reduce the trauma, right? Uh, from there, during preparation for dispatch, makeup is advised. But first we ask for the family's consent and also to know how the person used to be in real life. Pretty incredible. All right, at this point, we've got to take another quick break, but Dan Mwangi has the business news coming up in just a moment, so do stay with us. You have worked so lives. You too, so yogurt cup. Size yako, bay yako. Welcome to our new office. Wonderful sight. <laughs> Just imagine. One, two, three, four. Ha. This is where the parking is. And then the warehouse front door, here. The reception, here. And the fridges, here. The lorry's entrance there and their exit there. One way only. What is it? So where is the building? Fast, stress-free construction. Get your factory-made buildings in 10 weeks with Safbuild. Order yours now. Safbuild, a quality building solution from MRM. For a better tomorrow, don't forget to do the one, two, three with Colgate every night. Tuzo yogurt cup. Size yako, bay yako. Here we are, living in the moment. And here we are, dreaming in the open. Now look around, 
Isn't this a new day? Make a move, doing things a new way A new way Cause this is our world And this is our time These are our plans We're gonna let them shine This is our place In the human Build your tomorrow today. Tononoka Group, at the core of every... In your soccer team, no matter how old you are, you'll always be my baby. That's why I trust Dettol to clean, protect and keep you refreshed every day. I still can't believe how quickly you've grown. Dettol, tested effective against COVID-19. With the Stay Soft Refill, saving money is as easy as snip, pour, mix with water, and shake. Stay Soft Refill. It's two liters of Stay Soft for up to 30% less. All the days and the nights, reading for them and to them. You don't stop and neither do we. Help build a strong foundation for your growing child with Nestle Nunkid. Nestle Nunkid 4, our best for you. Sana Loto, this is the money hour. Gina Lango ni Beverly Nita. Kumbuka, unachezea jackpot ya 25 million Kenya shillings. Gina Lango ni Mike Makori. Hapa kukukubusha 25 million Kenya shillings could be yours if you match your six lucky numbers to enter the mega jackpot draw. All you have to do is play any amount from 50 shillings to 1,000 Kenya shillings known as a jishindia yani ile juu jackpot ya 25 million Kenya shillings. Kumbuka pia, thousands of other cash prizes are up for grabs in the second chance lucky draw. Kucheza ni raisi. All you have to do is wake between 50 bob to 1,000 Kenya shillings, pay bill number 777000, alafu tunakwambia kila laheri. Good evening and welcome to NTV Business. I'm Dan Mwangi. Now, despite the debt relief secured from the Paris Club and China in January, the debt servicing burden borne by the taxpayer in the current financial year is actually higher than indicated in the June 2020 budget. According to the supplementary budget published by the National Treasury, Kenya's debt service burden for the financial year between July 2020 and June 2021 will rise by 5.9 percent to 958 billion shillings. Julian Samboko with the details. That is true. Kenyans heaved a sigh of relief when on January 11, 2021, the National Treasury indicated that the taxpayer had received debt relief to the tune of 33 billion shillings from the Paris Club, whose lenders include Germany, France, Belgium and Denmark. The country would shortly later receive additional debt relief from China, about which the government has remained tight-lipped on the terms. The relief notwithstanding, the debt service burden on the taxpayer has actually gone upward. Data from the National Treasury contained in the supplementary budget indicates that the aggregate debt service burden for the current financial year has been revised upward to 958.4 billion shillings compared to the earlier 905 billion shillings. This rise can be attributed to an upward revision of the amount budgeted for the internal debt redemption from the previous 262 billion shillings to 362 billion shillings. The Treasury has also revised upward the amount to be spent on servicing interest on domestic debt by 31.6 billion shillings from the previous allocation of 308.4 billion shillings to 339.9 billion shillings. It is this increase in expenses on domestic debt which have wiped out the gains that would have been realized through debt relief secured on external debt. On the other end of the spectrum, 
The supplementary budget has revised downward the amount the state plans to spend in meeting pension obligations from the earlier budgeted 119 billion shillings to just 111 billion shillings, reflecting a decline of 8 billion shillings. Reduction in the amount spent on pensions are going to hit the armed forces with the gratuity to military revised downward by 4 billion shillings, the civil service where the gratuity has been revised downward by 2 billion shillings, and pension on dependence which has been reduced by 1 billion shillings. Julians Amboko, NTV. The Kenya Electricity Generating Company, that's Kenjin's quest for revenue diversification, has received a shot in the arm following the company securing over 709 million shilling contract to drill three geothermal wells in Djibouti. The deal with the Djiboutian Office of Geothermal Energy Development was signed in Galalikoma, Djibouti, in the presence of, among others, Energy CS Charles Keter. With the new deal, Kenjen is growing its brand as the regional go-to company for geothermal exploration, having already bagged lucrative contra contracts in neighboring Ethiopia. Currently, Kenya's energy mix is comprised of 29% geothermal power, 29% hydropower, 28% thermal, and 12% from wind, and the rest from solar and other sources. Banks have been urged to be more flexible in accommodating the challenges faced by micro, small, and medium-sized businesses, particularly in, li in light of the COVID-19 pandemic's effects. Now speaking during the unveiling of the Family Bank East Lee branch, Chairperson Wilfred Kiboro called upon stakeholders in the banking sector to further the efforts already made in helping businesses tied through the COVID-19 shock. Family Bank now has 92 branches across 37 counties as it looks to cement its footprint within the market. The bank is now looking to tap into the vibrant business environment in Isli. Biashara yako ikiwa iko na shida ni jukumu yetu kuja kuzungumza na wewe tujue vile tunaweza kufanya kufanya kazi pamoja tuone vile biashara inaweza kuinuka lakini sio kukibidia kuuza nyumba yako pengine ni nyumba ya familia leo tumewaletea ile banki inaelewa mwenye biashara mahitaji yenu I want to say that this is really a wonderful opportunity for us in the Isli uh, this is a vote of confidence in the future of this neighborhood. Now, telecom operators, that's telecom operators, I beg your pardon, Safaricom PLC, Airtel Networks, Kenya Limited, are among five companies awarded contracts to roll out mobile telecommunications infrastructure and services in 101 sub-locations in 19 marginalized counties in Kenya. The 1.57 billion shillings deal, deal marks the second phase of the universal service fund voice infrastructure and services project which seeks to avail communication services in unserved and underserved areas in Kenya. The USF is primarily financed by mandatory contributions of 0.5% of their gross revenue from licensed operators which provide services in the various communication market segment, segments with provisions for complementary financing from other sources. Selected sublocations will facilitate residents of beneficiary sublocations to enjoy a host of services which include mobile voice, data, internet, and, and a bouquet of other valued added services including mobile money. Last year we visited uh, some part in Kenya where people had never made a mobile phone call in their lives. And once the network signal became available, there was a mushrooming of businesses that happened in that area and a small town came up and therefore more opportunities. This is the kind of experience that we want to have. You also find that where signal becomes available, medical services follow, education standards go up, and this then enables education, business, health, and even security. If it is not done, then you will suddenly give uh, an opportunity for deepening a divide which would be very, very unfortunate. And this Business myself, both done. Good night. Tuzo yogurt cup. Size yako. 
bei yako. refreshed every day. I still can't believe how quickly you've grown. Dettol, tested effective against COVID-19. Heaviness and a burning inside, it could be heartburn. Kiungulia na kuvimbiwa? Ino inatibundani ya sekunde sita na inatuliza dalili sita za kiungulia. Kwa hivyo, unaweza kuburudika bila kikomo. Ino, tibu haraka kiungulia na tumbo kuvimba. Parenting is all about learning when to be tough and when to be gentle tough gentle but when it comes to fever you need to be both panadol baby and infant starts to work on fever in 15 minutes and is gentle on the tummy hmm tough call panadol baby and infant tough on fever gentle on your child The Ministry of Health would like to remind all Kenyans that coronavirus is still among us and that we must continue to adhere to all preventative measures to contain the spread of this deadly disease including proper wearing of face masks. Avoid wearing a mask under your nose, under your chin because this doesn't protect you. The droplets can still land on the environment and things can still land on your nose and mouth. Komesha corona o komaisha. Do your gums hurt? Yeah. Does your toothpaste contain sage, eucalyptus, myrrh, chamomile? All that in one toothpaste? Yes, try Colgate Herbal. Colgate Herbal contains nature's best herbs and Colgate's fluoride technology to give you strong teeth and healthy gums. Ah, Colgate Herbal. Let's go. Colgate Herbal for strong teeth and healthy gums naturally. Like every mother, I'm worried about dangerous insects, especially mosquitoes, which spread diseases like malaria to my loved ones. This year, I'm not afraid. I'm using Mortine Doom. Mortine Doom All Insect Killer provides protection in seconds. Not even a single mosquito is spared because even one mosquito bite can cause malaria. Mortine Doom provides protection in seconds. Tuzo yogurt cup size yako bei yako Rock Industries brings you rock plastic with a variety of kitchenware ranging from kitchen dishes, cups, plates, cloth lined pegs, spoons and even rulers for learners. All this coming in your preferred size, beautiful colors and texture and our products are one shop away from where you are across the country. All Rock Industries limited products are 100% virgin raw material that is cost friendly. For these and more products contact our offices on 0722575619 or 0 0736028181 You can also visit our offices in industrial area Ndume Road off Longa Longa Road Nairobi
gauge 28 at 670 Kenya shillings, gauge 30 at 370, gauge 30 med at 530, royal aloe zinc at 280 Kenya shillings. Call us today on 0722-638383, Royal Mabati Factory Limited. We are the best. Karibu ni sana Lotto, this is the money hour, jina langu ni Beverly Nita. Kumbuka, unachezea jackpot ya 25 million Kenya shillings. Jina langu ni Mike Makori, hapa kukukubusha 25 million Kenya shillings could be yours if you match your six lucky numbers to enter the mega jackpot draw. All you have to do is play any amount from 50 shillings to 1,000 Kenya shillings known as a jishindia, yani ile juu jackpot ya 25 million Kenya shillings. Kumbuka pia, thousands of other cash prizes are up for grabs in the second chance lucky draw. Kucheza ni raisi. All you have to do is wake between 50 bob to 1,000 Kenya shillings, pay bill number 777000, alafu tunakuambia kila laheri. All right, thanks very much for staying with us. Uh, tonight we have received a report of a patrol aircraft that has crashed in Nanuki. This is a KWS aircraft and in a statement from the service, it says KWS is deeply saddened by the loss of two members of staff aboard a two-seater Husky aircraft which crashed immediately after takeoff from Nanyuki Civil Airport. The two are a pilot and a passenger. The aircraft, which is under the National Air Support Department, had just completed a routine patrol at the Solio Rhino Sanctuary and was en route to the Meru National Park. The KWS team, in collaboration with Mountain Rescue, are on the ground for evacuation operations. The statement goes on to say that the cause of the crash is yet to be established and investigations are underway. More details to follow according to that statement from the Kenya Wildlife Service. Uh, news in that a patrol aircraft has crashed in Nanyuki with two members of staff aboard. More details as and when we get it. Elsewhere, family and friends gathered earlier today for a memorial service of the late former cabinet minister, Simeon Nyachai, who was remembered as a true servant leader of integrity. Opposition leader Raila Odinga was among the leaders who joined friends and relatives at the Maxwell SDA church in Nairobi. Raila remembered Nyachai as an efficient man, as WIPA leader Kalonzo Musyoka described the 2002 presidential candidate as an experienced go-getter. ANC party leader Musalia Mudavadi recalled how he served in the same cabinet as Nyachai, impressed by his no-nonsense attitude. Nyachai died on the 1st of February, aged 89, and will be buried on Monday at his home in Kisi after a funeral service at the Gusi Stadium. And it started for what was right regardless of what others said. When one looks at Nyachai, you also see somebody who stood for merit. He didn't believe in shortcuts. The integrity of the public service was perhaps at, at its highest during the tenure of Simeon Nyachai. We would take time to listen to Mzee Nyachai in cabinet. It was so clear that although he was Minister for Agriculture, he had that all-round experience which the chairman of the cabinet, President Moi, would always defer to Mzee Nyachai. He was a very compassionate person, but he also lacked uh, uh, um, efficiency, trained in the colonial culture, of efficiency. So it's helped so many Kenyans to acquire education. All right, from that, let's shift focus. We take a quick break. Ida Waringa has the sports news in a moment. from Mo 
Perfix. Let's see what they are developing right now. Morphix pants with anatomic fit technology. New Morphix pants, an invention from babies for babies. You should also try Morphix. Tuzo yogurt cup. Size yako, bay yako. Madam Dosonga made to pass me on good and yamaji. Dosi yako kosa. When you can't have any ambia, I mean ambia, a jewy, now I can pick a sim. A shiki. Hey! Guy! For the women who deserve more, Moped is now in Kenya and more than 40 countries with its nylon free surface. New Moped has unique softness and up to 100% protection. Your skin will love it. I even gifted you a magnificent house. Huh? Hmm. Rosa, it's the thought that counts. <laughs> Please help me. When it comes to fever, you need to be both. Panadol Baby and Infant starts to work on fever in 15 minutes and is gentle on the tummy. Panadol Baby and Infant, tough on fever, gentle on your child. You too, so yogurt cup. Size yako, bay yako. Baby for you. This week on the trend. Oh, you got me in love, love, baby. Na you walk on nothing, you wear the same. Sina sifa za kihaya Nilicho jari wa mahaba All this and many more only on The Trend Amina Hadi, mama you on fire Gift your loved one a plot of value-added land at the Garden of Joy and get an instant 14K cash voucher for a 500K plus deposit. Call us today on 0790-300-300. Sana Loto, this is the money hour. Jina Lango ni Beverly Nita. Kumbuka, unachezea jackpot ya 25 million Kenya shillings. Jina Lango ni Mike Makori. Hapa kukukubusha 25 million Kenya shillings could be yours if you match your six lucky numbers to enter the mega jackpot draw. All you have to do is play any amount from 50 shillings to 1,000 Kenya shillings known as a jishindia, yani ile ju jackpot ya 25 million Kenya shillings. Kumbuka pia, thousands of other cash prizes are up for grabs in the second chance lucky draw. Kucheza ni raisi. All you have to do is wake up between 50 bob to 1,000 Kenya shillings, pay bill number 777000, alafu tunakuambia kila laheri. Very good evening to you. Time for the latest in the world of sport. And Kenya is looking to fill the 80 slots allocated by the International Paralympics Committee as the country takes part in the World Para-Athletics Grand Prix in Dubai. Team Kenya is represented by 43 athletes that were picked during national trials held in January. Kenya has so far earned four qualification slots with two in athletics, one in rowing and one in powerlifting. The Dubai qualifiers will be held from 7 
11th to 14th February, but there will still be another chance to qualify the second round. That will be in Manchester in the UK later on. The 2020 Paralympic Games were scheduled for Tokyo from August 25th through to 6th September 2020, but postponed to this year alongside the Olympic Games following the global outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic. Great. In the Bet King Premier League will now have players and coaches awarded monthly with culmination in an end-of-season award gala. For this, the Football Kenya Federation, in partnership with the Sports Journalists Association of Kenya, has established a seven-member panel to oversee the process with the first, with the first award, beg your pardon, for player and coach of the month of January set for Friday. Great. And African giants Al Ali have placed third in the FIFA Club World Cup. After beating South American champions Palmeiras 3-2 on post-match penalties after what was a nil-nil draw in normal time, European champions Bayern Munich are currently on against Mexico's Tigres in the final, eager to make history to complete the rare clean sweep of six titles inside of 12 months. The German giants are bidding to become only the second club after Barcelona, who did it in 2009 to win all six domestic and international titles available in a single season, having already claimed the Champions League, UEFA Super Cup, German Super Cup, Bundesliga and German Cup titles in 2020, Bayern want to complete that set. All they do is win, 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 right? Wolves are currently hosting Southampton in the early FA Cup fifth round with Chelsea set to face Burns Burnsley, beg your pardon, later tonight. On Wednesday, Everton upped the pressure on Jose Mourinho with a thrilling 5-4 victory over Tottenham after extra time to reach the quarterfinals as Manchester City is into the last eight by beating Swansea 3-1. Mourinho's men made a bright start at Goodison Park as Davinson Sanchez Sanchez headed them into the lead after just three minutes. However, the defensive errors saw Everton strike three times in seven minutes just before halftime through Dominic Calvert-Lewin, Richarlison and Gelpi Sigurdsson's penalty. Eric Lamella reduced Spurs' deficit in the first half stoppage time before another rare goal for Sanchez made it 3-3. Richarlison and Kane's goal sent the match to extra time at 4-4 before Bernard scored the winner. In other results, Leicester edged Brighton 1-0 as Sheffield United beat Bristol City by a similar margin. Sevilla's Jules Kunde scored a fine goal and even Rakitic struck against his old side as Barcelona lost their Copa del Rey semi-final 2-0 in the first leg. Kunde ran from his own penalty area, beat four Barca players and then confidently fired past Mark andre to Stegen. Rakitic, who left the new camp at the end of August after winning 11 trophies with Barca, made sure with a thumping finish into the roof of the net. Julian Lopetegui's side saw out the win without conceding to take a big advantage into the second leg at the new camp that will be on 3rd March. Barcelona beat Sevilla 5-0 in the final three years ago. Athletic Bilbao, who could win the yet-to-be-played 2019-2020 final in April, are in the second semi-final against Levante tonight. Great. Now, this one is pretty interesting. Qatar has turned over 800,000 square meters of desert into a giant nursery to supply the 2022 World Cup venues with, quote unquote, made in Qatar turf. The nursery will also provide the venues with home green, homegrown trees and greeneries, a challenge in Qatar's harsh climate that can often reach 50 degrees Celsius weather in the summer using recycled water from one of the country's seaweed treatment plants. The manager of the nursery says that what they've accomplished will be one of the World Cup's lasting legacies for the country, making Qatar more self-reliant for any future landscaping project. 
12 different species of turf were tested at the nursery to find the best match for Qatar's climate and to comply with FIFA standards. The turf is harvested two or three times per year. It is now installed in five stadiums. By the time the tournament kicks off, though, all eight stadiums and all 41 training sites will be fit with this turf. I love it. Sports, innovation, creativity, everything in one. That does it for Sport for tonight. Do talk to me at Ida Waringa on Twitter. It's back to Smriti. Green spaces, that is the best thing, Ida. So fantastic. And uh, all that, or part of it anyway, from um, a sewage treatment plant. Pretty brilliant. All right, well, that's all we have time for on NTV tonight. Thanks ever so much for watching. Flora Atieno has been our sign language interpreter. I'm Smriti Vidyarthi. Have yourselves a good night and stay safe. This is NTV. Presenting the new Hapik Bathroom Cleaner. Compared to ordinary detergents, its thick formulation gives you superior cleaning and kills 99.9% .9 of germs and viruses all around the bathroom. Blue for the toilet and red for the bathroom. How many ways can you enjoy your Jameson? Well, with the taste so smooth, every pour is perfect for chilling, chatting, and connecting and taking time out to toast to life's little pleasures. So grab a glass and make room for others because good taste doesn't have a time or place. Why? Smooth taste, that's why. Don't drink and drive, not for sale to persons under the age of 18. Excessive consumption of alcohol is harmful to your health. At the first sign of pain, you need a solution that you can trust to provide effective relief and it's gentle on the stomach. Try Panadol Advance for relief from headaches, body aches, and fever. With Panadol's Optizob formula, the tablet gently breaks down in the stomach, quickly absorbs, and starts providing pain relief in 15 minutes. For fast and effective pain relief that you can trust, try Panadol Advance. This has been Medifax for Panadol. Baby, for you. This week on The Trend. Oh, you got me in love, love. Baby, I told me, 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 I told